I'm Noel. I'm Jenny. And I'm Cole. And we're living overseas on a dime. That's a channel name. Thanks. So yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Living Overseas on a Dime. I thought today we'd do something a little bit different. Uh, just going for a walk here, end of July. Finally nice weather. It's been rotating between boiling hot and uh, really smoky from the forest fires. So you know what, I just thought I'd take you a bit on an afternoon walk through a place that we generally love to walk in, which is our uh, local cemetery. So we really enjoy, we try and do like a morning walk if we can down here and get a full lap in. It's about, I don't know, two and a half, three kilometers and uh, gets a little bit of exercise. Gets, gets to spend some time in the green space with the, as a family, which is nice. But uh, yeah, so we're about six months out now. I think we've uh, decided that pretty much the beginning of February, we will be hitting the road. So, puts a little bit of a time crunch on, and uh, here we are. And it's kind of a fitting place because, you know, I've been thinking about a lot of things in relation to our possessions and uh, attachments to these things, which is an interesting dilemma that I think we have because a lot of the time we especially in North American culture. I'm not really sure about European. But uh, Canada and the United States, often we don't really s talk about money very much and it's a little bit of a taboo discussion point. And uh, people just, when it comes to their finances and talking about these sort of things, they're very tight-lipped and people just don't, <laughs> It's interesting because it's like we just can't even talk about these things which leads to a lot of problems in relation to both our money matters and uh, family matters and even emotional attachments to a lot of different things. So Jenny and I are generally pretty darn good at saving and uh, where we really excel is that final six months, that kind of countdown to the finish line. And so, as part of that, I've set up kind of like a $20,000 goal. See if we can hit it. I don't know, might not be possible. <laughs> but uh, so far it's been interesting because we've been selling, well I've definitely been selling a lot of my kind of most prized possessions. I had a Martin HD 28 guitar that I sold another guitar I'm going to be selling some banjos and all I'm keeping for my the entire trip is my one classical guitar so even I sold off a bunch of my kind of more spiritual minded books and uh, it's an interesting process I must say I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Marie Kondo and uh, but it's there's there's definitely something to be said for her writings in that we have this emotional connection to the things that we own. And sometimes in ways that we don't even really think about. It's like this attachment to the idea of the thing rather than the thing, which, you know, even looking at my books, it's kind of like, well, I might need those. Well, yeah, you might, but they've probably been sitting in a box for the last two years. And the last time you read any of them was 10 years ago. Well, hmm kind of puts it in perspective a little bit. Well, how about a guitar? Well, a guitar you can use again, right? And maybe, maybe you'll play it again. Well, maybe. But once again, the last time I touched that guitar was probably six, seven years ago. So is that something that I'm going to play and enjoy? Probably not. And, you know, giving it to someone else and well, selling it to someone else and letting them enjoy it and letting me utilize that money as a way to give me freedom to continue in life, I think is an important thing. 
Which brings me to a point where, you know, it's, a lot of the things that we collect are almost an attempt at happiness. I'm not saying I have discovered the secret to happiness. I definitely haven't. But uh, I think as, as I've been shedding these things, it feels like I'm shedding these attachments to these old parts of myself. And I think a big part of what we want to do is create new selves, create, you know, Noel 2.0 and Jenny 2.0. Cole doesn't need a new one, he's good. But uh, so a lot of that is shedding these old parts of ourselves and clinging to those things to try and create something new. And that's uh, very much, I think, the power of hitting the point with your finances that you can just let go and uh, move on to something new. One of the things that I've found kind of surprising in this process of shedding our things, getting rid of our possessions, is that some of these things actually other people believe they have value too. So don't sell yourself short. Like definitely donate the stuff that is beyond repair and not able to be used. But at the same time, you know, put out some feelers. Uh, I know for me, I had some of my books that ended up being worth a lot more money than I thought. An old record that I got signed, which I probably won't sell because it's, you know, Leonard Cohen and I like Leonard Cohen. But uh, it's worth a fair amount of money. So don't, don't shortchange yourself. Have a look and uh, look into, do your research. Find out what stuff can be sold for, and as long as you can spare the time, uh, try and try and sell some stuff. You might actually be pleasantly surprised and make a little bit of a nest egg to get you going on your travels. After I've been walking around for a bit and thinking a fair bit about what I've been saying and the location and whatnot, I realize this is kind of a depressing video. It wasn't really intended like that, and I don't really look at transitory nature of life and these sort of things in a depressing fashion. In truth, I see it to be the opposite. You need to embrace life. We know it's short. Let's embrace it and live life and enjoy and love each other. And you know what? At the same time, travel the earth because that's what we're here for. You need to see this place and enjoy what the world has to offer. So, here at a nice spot down by the Red River, and uh, you know, just gets me to continue to think about the transitory nature of things and how none of us have really any idea how long we're going to be here. So, I think COVID too has really, really kind of sunk that into many of us who maybe lost loved ones or made us rethink the way that we were doing things and rethink our jobs and rethink our lives. And uh, I know that's a part of it for us, that we're ready for something new. And you know, it doesn't mean that everything's gonna work out exactly as we've planned, because uh, we don't expect that. We definitely have some backup plans and are trying to remain as flexible as possible. If we need to work, we need to work and that's fine. And really, I think a big part of it is that we actually would like to be able to have some income coming in. So, you know, if the markets go down or if we want uh, to let our investments grow a bit to give a bit more safety, I think that would be nice for sure. But, uh, you know, I think it comes, it comes back to that uh, memento mori. Remember that you do die. Remember that that uh, we have this one precious life that we have to live and uh, you know maybe you believe in reincarnation or, or an afterlife or whatever you do believe in 
but as we know it right now, we have this life and we need to uh, enjoy it with the people we love. So, so a big part of what we are doing and what we're planning on doing is uh, enjoying life to the fullest, enjoying experiences. One of the things that we've realized in this preparation phase is that things aren't that important to us. They're important, of course. And you know what, if they're important to you, that's fine. Everyone has different priorities in life and uh, we're just excited to be getting ready to hit the road and uh, start some new adventures. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Click the like button and all that jazz and uh, happy travels.